This is One in 54, a presentation of Anderson Center for Autism. One in 54 is a weekly show devoted to topics related to autism spectrum disorder. Good morning and welcome to One in 54, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, Chief Development Officer at Anderson Center for Autism. And this morning, I have the great pleasure of speaking for the second time in recent days um, with uh, the founders, owners, creators, developers, I'll let you add whatever you want to add to that, of <laughs> Exceptional Heroes. And we're talking with Georgie. Uh, Savannah and Doris Palafox. Did I get that right? But Doris is coin. <laughs> I apologize. Doris. No, you're good. Okay. Yeah, you're good. We're still we three generations. <laughs> yes. And I was just going to say, before we get into um, your story and what we're going to talk about today, I just wanted to point out something that I thought was really cool when you came recently to visit Anderson um, with some of your exceptional heroes. And that is that you are a three generation um, business, which I think is just uh, unusual and really cool. And it was great that you all came Came out together. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We have loved working together. We yes. it, it has its trials at times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but sure. It, I'm it, sure. It, We've absolutely. all been through those types of things. Kind of like you know, learning to drive with one of your parents. It's it's wonderful and terrible all at the same time. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But we each have our own skills that we hone in on, and we sharpen each other. That's great. So um, I want to make sure that I give you as much time as possible because I've already had the great pleasure of meeting you as well as Monroe and Shelby, um, who are your exceptional heroes. But I want you to be able to tell everybody listening all about yourselves and your work. And um, then towards the end, we can get into sort of your next steps and what people can expect to see coming soon. So who's going to start us off? I will. Um, All right. Savannah, so, <laughs> go ahead. So um, I'm Savannah. I am the creator of Exceptional Heroes, which is a therapeutic product that um, I invented to be all inclusive and all embracing. And we call them Shelby and Monroe because they're based off therapy animals. I trained real therapy animals, which are now in a plush form and they have five of the seven senses. They um, help with tactile stimulation, reduce stress. They have pressure therapy, aroma therapy, and then they also have mindfulness breathing. And I'll let my mom add to it to it. So, you know, we like to say that we're a all women, a minority, all women owned mission based company. And the reason why we say mission is that um, we, we are looking at manufacturing these therapeutic products, but we also are on a mission to bring light to the areas of trauma, disabilities, mental health, um, and um, invisible and visible disabilities, mm -hmm. and then the elderly community. A lot of times they're forgotten, you know, it's like, oh, I have grandma who has dementia but they don't understand all of the trials that come along with it and also all, all of the, the therapies behind it um, because they still want a good quality of life. And so what we um, are aiming to doing is we, Savannah has um, her platform where we bring light to these um, various um, disabilities or conditions. Um, we also bring a positive light to the people that are functioning and have jobs and are thriving in it. Um, and then as well as, you know, um, sharing our heroes because our heroes are there for support and to comfort and just to bring a more healthier mindset uh, and healthier mental health and uh, healthier mental wellness. Fantastic. Thank you for that overview. And just because uh, I know, Doris, you're not going to... Um, be, be sharing a ton today just because three people, right. it's a lot for the interview, but I would love to just give you a second to say what your role in the business is, because I know you have a, a pretty specific one as well as being top of the generation chain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I take care of compliance and vendor management. Uh, I have worked with many, many vendors just to get the right products at the right pricing. Okay. Uh, I work with compliance to make sure that every stitch is according to what is standard and expected. And I also make sure that they are acceptable for um, the customer, right? For the person that we'll be selling them to so that, you know, they are have go through all the stress, stress regulations that are going to be necessary. Okay. So my job is behind the scenes, <laughs> but it's important. <laughs> none of none, nobody else would be here if it was not for you. So right. Okay. Yeah. Right. equally important. All right. So, so thank you. So just for the listeners, the first person you heard speaking is Savannah. The second person is Georgie. And the third person, the final person who just heard speaking is Doris. And I, uh, again, you know, all collectively coming together for exceptional heroes. Um, let me just transition to, to the, I, I really want you to be able to talk about, um, 
Uh, you th- a couple of things you mentioned. You mentioned sort of invisible disabilities, um, mental health awareness, mission based, um, and 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 there's also a beautiful video that you've created um, that Savannah you're in and you kind of narrate a little bit. And um, to me, that was very helpful before I met you, just to get a sense of where this is all coming from. So, can one of you share where people can get more information about um, about your your story and your products? Did you want her to share her story or just the... No, the, just for now, just the link, because I think link. we can okay. touch on parts of it in a few minutes. Sure. So um, our, we have a fully functional website. You can find us on um, exceptionalheroes.com, and that's uh, H-E-R-O-E-S, heroes.com. Uh, you can also find us, and our, our video is on our website that tells our Exceptional Heroes journey and tells Savannah's story on um, her trauma to transformation and how she's helping, um, you know, our communities with mental health and wellness. And then you can also find us on Instagram um, and all of our social medias, exceptional underscore heroes. And uh, we have Twitter. We even have a TikTok. She has me dancing on that. Yeah. Um, and so we try to do funky Fridays and do just different things to try to help people with mental wellness and showing that you don't have to be on a treadmill every day to have fun to, to help, you know, you know, increase those um, serotonins and that happy agents. But you can do a TikTok dance and still stimulate and get yourselves happy and put you in a more stable, um, balanced mood. Great message right there, uh, especially for those of us who watch those commercials about the happy people on the treadmill and go, I just don't. That's not me. <laughs> that way when I'm on the treadmill, yes. but that's okay. Um, all right, so so let's go. Through, so thank you for that. I just want people to know that there's lots more information yes. that you can find because we're not going to be able to get it. We don't have the time to get into the entire story, um, but I think that it's really important to to keep reminding people that this um, exceptional heroes was created out of a desire and a personal experience. Of very personal experience in going from trauma to transformation for you, Savannah, and and obviously that impacted your family and the people who love you and and the people you love. Um, And then of course the the therapeutic animal piece of it. Um, I want to just, just have you ask you to talk about um, something that I noticed when I watched the video, which was there was an example of a, of a, a young woman who was walking into a doctor's office into a very crowded waiting room. She was not necessarily greeted very warmly by the person behind the desk um, who is probably used to just sort of spitting out information for people who need a pen or need to fill out paperwork. She obviously felt overwhelmed. You don't really even need to know why. And I think that that was what spoke to me about that message is that we're so used to like demanding to know why somebody's feeling stress or feeling anxious. And that one moment of watching that to me made me remember um, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter really in most cases. What should matter is somebody is feeling anxious and there's something that you might be able to offer that person to make them feel better. Maybe it's space. Maybe it's a kind word. Maybe it's a smile. In this case though, if you were to offer somebody Shelby or Monroe, um, can one of you just explain now for our listeners, what that would look like and feel like to that person? So Um, that part of the video actually was something that happened in real life with myself, um, because I do have PTSD, um, and I have to carry so much stuff in my backpack just to help me get to the grocery store. That scene was actually real, but in a cow's ranch, which is a feed store out here in Arizona. Um, but, um, Shelby, what, um, giving someone Shelby or Monroe can give a piece of calm, for many reasons, um, because he's weighted and he feels like a real animal, you can, he's just huggable and he just gives you that sense of peace. Uh, the way they look also, they have these very cute, distinguished eyes that you just like, you're like, oh, kind of thing. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to put him down. Yes. But he's not only aw, he's also, he also has that therapeutic aspect that helps people with just a number of things. These were created when I first created the exceptional heroes, it was for those of trauma and autism because I worked um, for a long time with um, autistic kids from uh, preschool to sixth grade. And after testing these guys um, with different people, we found out that they could be more, more than just um, for those of trauma and autism, but also for physical therapy maintaining your mental health. So with all the components, with how they look, they just give you that sense of calm, peace, and you're going to do okay. 
And then I'll insert just real quick um, as a caregiver, you know, with um, Savannah, you know, she, she's a sexual assault survivor. She has PTSD. And then prior to that, she um, has um, uh, chronic, um, she has chronic migraines and a seizure disorder. So the seizures, you know, um, she, it, it means her go unconscious for, you know, up to five minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. And so as a caregiver in situations such as like what you saw in the example of the video of the young girl, what Shelby and Monroe could do, what I would have done is immediately in those situations is hand them a hero for the pressure therapy to start already. What science shows is the weight starts to calm down the body. It calms down the heart rate, lowers the blood pressure, and then it kind of bridges that from the chaotic in the mind and the chaotic in your your nervous system. It starts to calm it down. And then I would start with the the bells that are in it so that they could start grounding because that's the problem is that we get so anxious that all we hear is a lot of noise and um, we can't really focus anymore. And so that's what these guys do is help to bring you back to the present, help ground you, help calm you, and then just support what's the next steps. Do we need to give you medication? Do we need to sit you up? What is the next step? But we've now calmed an erratic situation and we've now allowed you to give you strength to now get up, get better. And then let's, let's move forward. Right. It's almost like um, it offers a, a window of time to decide yes. what that next step is instead mm-hmm. of sort of doing 10 steps all in the midst of a panic situation. Exactly. Um, Cause sometimes you can't get a yeah. fidget in front of them to start fidgeting right away, or you can't get some yeah. of the other tools. Absolutely. Well, actually, and Savannah, when you were saying that it, um, they create a feeling of, you know, the looking at them is sort of an awe, what came to mind was that it's an awe and an ah at the same time. Yes. When you placed Monroe, which is the rabbit on my lap, I immediately felt, Ah, and that was just a regular work day for me. I mean, I was just, you know, it was an afternoon. It was a busy day, um, but it, it really does. Um, they feel very real in terms of that, the perfect amount of pressure um, and weight. We need to take a short break. When we come back, I realize that we're talking, I'm just mentioning things in a, in a lot of sort of, um, uh, I guess, specific ways. I want, I want to ask you to give an overview of all those senses that they address and how you did that so that people can start to really get a picture in their minds about um, who these, who these uh, animals are. This is one in 54, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, and we'll be right back. I've got a math question for you. When you add tolerance, subtract prejudice and multiply efforts to treat one another with respect, what do you get? Less division. And school sports have it down to a science. Looking for an example of what can happen when we realize there's more that unites us than divides us? Look no further than high school sports in New York. This message presented by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association and the New York State Athletic Administrators Association. And now 1 in 54 continues on 100.7 WHUD. This is a weekly community affairs program presented by the Anderson Center for Autism. Welcome back to 1 in 54, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, and I am speaking with the uh, the the coin Palifax (laughs) um, uh, three generational team behind exceptional heroes. And so uh, Doris, Georgie and Savannah, thank you again for being on the show today. Uh, It's lovely to see you on Zoom, although and I can now see adorable Shelby, I think that is. Yes. Um, (laughs) Unfortunately, our listeners will only be able to hear us talking about <laughs> yeah. Shelby and Monroe. But again, I want to urge everybody listening to check out exceptionalheroes.com, where you can also uh, read about exceptional heroes, better understand the story and, and everybody behind it, as well as watch a really impactful video um, that to me gave me a, a lot of um you know, inspiration, information, uh, better understanding about what you're doing with exceptional heroes. So um, we've all talked about different aspects, the weight, the, the, the fact that, um, that Savannah, your research and your, your market research really taught you that this, um, these can be very helpful to a much larger audience than you might have originally thought of them for. Um, but can, can one of you just sort of quickly go through all of the different sensory um, aspects that are involved in both Shelby and Monroe and where somebody might find those if they happen to have one of these uh, sweethearts on their laps? So we have Monroe and Shelby. Monroe is a four pound rabbit and Shelby is an eight pound dog. 
Um, going from head to tail in his head will be a sound box for mindfulness breathing, controlled breathing. And um, it already has a sound that's um, pre-recorded in the sound box to tell you when to breathe in and when to breathe out with Tibetan bells. Um, in the two front paws, we have textile simulation, which is a um, Velcro hook the hook part, which is the rough texture part. And if you don't want to use those, we have a glove that goes over them. And um, that's a great part about it is that they can um, fold up and you can use it. And if you don't want it, you can fold it down. Um, going back up, because I forgot about the neck, we have a collar that has 100% um, pressed wool for aromatherapy. Um, you can use it if you want. You can use it if you don't, um, but it's there for that option. Uh, again, he uh, Shelby and Monroe are four and eight pounds. In the back paws are stress, what we call stress paws. They're like stress balls. Um, and that is to release any stress, tension, anything you might be feeling. You can also use it for physical therapy. Um, anything you want to add, Mom? Yeah. So and when she talks about the weight, most um, plush products out there, the weight is in the rump. Um, and it moves. Um, and what we did is our patent is that it is equally distributed. So it gives you that same pressure as a weighted blanket, but in the form of a plush animal. So from, um, from paw to tail all the way through the body, um, as Eliza, you, you felt Shelby and Monroe, it's equally distributed. You can put them upside down, sideways, however, and the, the beads will not move, the micro beads. So it keeps so that you can have that consistent pressure. Uh, the, the mittens that are attached are seamlessly um, attached. So you can't even tell that the um, that there's textile stimulation underneath with the Velcro. We did this purposeful for those that don't need tactile stimulation. And so that they just want the, the other elements that um, are in the heroes. We also include a... Uh, a service vest on every hero. And that's because we want you to know this is your service animal. This is your safety companion. Mm -hmm. This is yours that is to help you. And we want others to know that, that when they see you're walking around with it, this is your, this is your guy that makes you feel safe, um, comforted. And, you know, and then it allows others to ask like, where do you get that? What is that? How do I get my own safety personalized for me? I think there's so many things that you've thought of when creating um, the, these heroes that are really um, that really stood out for for me and my colleagues who were in that room who, who had a chance to meet you as well. Um, real quick, some of the ones that really stood out for me was the weight that you were talking about. Um, you, almost all of us have at one point probably held a, a, a typical sort of plush animal toy. There's all sorts of different qualities, different types, different sizes, but these feel like I have an actual dog at home. And when she jumps on my lap at night and snuggles me, it gives me that same feeling. It's, it's she's warm, but you feel her whole body. And that's what Shelby felt like to me. It was not like, Oh, I feel like I'm holding a stuffed animal for my child. No, it was, this is different. This immediately was something um, that had a different type of weight to it. And then one of you mentioned, you know, hugging them. And yes. so at one point I turned, I think it was when I had Monroe, the bunny, I turned him so that he was more on my chest, even though I was sitting up and the, it was so great because you didn't lose all the weight. Right. Um, and many of us in this field mm -hmm. know all about weighted blankets and mm -hmm. weighted vests, but um, you know, to be quite honest, they're not nearly as adorable. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and then I think you also though bridge the gap of some people, especially adults often, um, might feel a little uncomfortable about the idea of walking around with what others might see as an, a stuffed animal mm -hmm. um, in public. But the, the addition of the service vest is just brilliant because yeah. everybody these days um, can relate to what that means. And, um, and I think that that also helps with something that, that we think about a lot, at least at Anderson, which is stigma in, mm -hmm. in the public view, um, which is, uh, so I think it's a really nice bridging of, something that feels really good that um uh that is uh relatable to a lot of people but also like you said georgie clearly designates the exceptional heroes as um uh, something therapeutic uh, yeah. and i know all of your patents and everything around that are very different than than what you'd need to go through just to make a a stuffed animal that you might sell at a toy store so um so i just wanted to point that out that i think you've, you've put a tremendous amount of thought and effort into those aspects the other thing that i remember you mentioning which i thought was cool is that 
there's no glued on eyes. Everything is embroidered. It, it's very safe. Um, nothing's going to come off in somebody's hand and become a hazard. Um, and I know you probably have had to go through the ringer in terms of making sure that yes. uh, that that all passes muster. But it's all worth it because um, for a lot of people who I think would find these helpful, um, they might also engage in behaviors where they're going to choose a certain area and pick at it for a while. Right. So you need to make sure that you take that into consideration. Um, so we have um, about four minutes or so left. I want to make sure I give you some time to talk about the future. Uh, people are going to listen to this. They're going to want to know where they can go, when they can get them. Um, and and where do you want people to, to keep going to check on updates? And what are your plans for the future? So um, I... You know, to keep updated on Exceptional Heroes, we really encourage you to visit our website and subscribe. Um, we send out um, updates about, you know, where we are in our process. Um, we're a very transparent family. A lot of people say, I feel like I'm a part of your family. And, and that's how we want you to feel. When you get to know us, when, you know, you even go into our website, um, our stories are there. You know, we want to be authentic because um, we want others to know that, you know what, there are others that are going, have gone through what you've gone through, are going through what you're going through, and we're just normal people. So we want you to be a part of our family. So we encourage you to sign up. Um, also, you know, um, there's always information um, on our blog. We have or I think it's called a blog now because um, there are videos on there. Um, so that's on our website where we're at is right now we are um, we've gone around, you know, uh, different parts of the states. We've shipped our prototypes all over, had them tested um, with um, organizations. We visited places like, you know, Anderson Center for Autism. And what we're trying to do is look for funding because our goal is to start manufacturing these guys uh, in the new year with delivery um, late spring. So that is our goal. That's what we're trying to do. And um, we're going to keep pursuing. We know we um, had COVID hit. And so we've had multiple obstacles in the last two years that have tried to hit us and stop us. Mm -hmm. um, but the three of us are a force to be reckoned with. You know, we definitely yep. believe in in uh, women empowerment and, you know, um, you know, they, they say only 2% of women's um, businesses get funded as in entrepreneurs. Well, we're going to break that. We're going to make it more. So we want to show that, you know, women, um, you know, can create successful businesses and still be moms, grandmas, daughters, and uh, we could still be soft and ooey gooey, but we also can be professional in the boardroom. So that's, you know, what we're trying to do. And, um, and we're trying to do, you know, the best job we can doing it, just spreading the word and, and going on shows such as yours, which we're very grateful for. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, it was really nice to meet all of you. I um I just I, I would just echo what you just said. I think everybody listening should definitely go check out Exceptional Heroes. That's heroes with an H E R O E S dot com for more information. Um, subscribe, follow, consider ways that you might be able to support Exceptional Heroes. Just just having worked at I've worked at Anderson Center for Autism for fifteen years. Uh, a lot of the colleagues that were in that room with me who. Um, who got a chance to to touch Shelby and Monroe and and hear directly from the three of you uh, are also people who've worked in this field for a long time and um, I mean there was just a general sense of, of strong enthusiasm for what this could do both with exceptional heroes but also just in terms of the field it's a different way of thinking about something that I love which is anybody who takes a passion for something something that they love in their life or something that has personally affected them and and broadens it out to be impactful for many others I think it's just doing an incredible service to to the world so um so I really hope that that people do um you know continue to follow you and I wish you the best of luck and 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 I can't wait to see Monroe and Shelby out um again not in toy stores they won't be in toy stores no nope. they're not a toy but they will be available as a therapeutic uh, tool and a therapeutic support for those who will benefit from it. And um, I'm telling you, all you got to do is, is touch one of those paws or put one of those guys on your lap. And um, no matter what kind of day you're having, it'll just get better. Yes. And if you, really and on our site, we have for donations and we also have mental health apparel that we're selling. Okay. And, and every single penny that comes in through that is going to get to manufacturing these guys. Um, we are not taking salaries. We put every penny back into our heroes because um, we know that's important and we know that there's others out there that need them. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Again, it's exceptionalheroes.com. I want to thank you, uh, Doris Coyne, Georgie Palafox, Savannah Palafox, and uh, Shelby and Monroe, Exceptional <laughs> Heroes. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for introducing thank yourselves you. to us at Anderson and best of luck in your future. It's really, um, it's really cool, cool stuff. Great. Thank, thank you, Liza.
This is One in 54, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, and remember, Anderson cares. You've been listening to One in 54, a presentation of Anderson Center for Autism. Join us for another edition of the show at the same time next week. 